Hey there, and welcome back to the video series about building this RESTful API. So the first thing we need to do is to uh, create an account on MongoDB, the online database Atlas. And we can go to this URL, account.mongodb, and then we should be taken to where we can actually either log in or create a, a new account. So if, we, if you don't have an account, you can click on the sign up, and it will... Um, ask you for some uh, information then you can create a, uh, a new account but I'm just gonna log in to my account here and then we're taking to the uh, administration interface uh, in uh, MongoDB Atlas and we can see that I don't have any organizations yet we need to create one in order to create a cluster that can hold our data so we're gonna create an organization and we need to provide a name for this could be anything that you type in here I think I'm just gonna type MongoDB Atlas in the organization name and then we can choose between MongoDB Atlas and the cloud manager and I'm gonna take the MongoDB Atlas okay so we're just gonna say click next here and we're going to we don't need to uh, uh, in this example I don't need to uh, give additional members access to it, but you could technically add other members to this. So we're gonna create the organization and now we can see that we have, we've logged in, we have an organization. So now we need to make a project. And it, you can have multiple projects on this online database. Uh, so it's a really nice feature and um, it's a free service here. Okay, so now I need to name my project and let's just type man rest full api and could be anything any name again uh, it has to be unique within the organization so again uh, i'm the project owner for this create the project so now we should have a project and we can see here that in order for um, in order to make this work we must create a cluster and a cluster is what will actually host our data and provide the security and all this stuff here so we click build a cluster and we can select between different uh, cluster types and some of them will cost money because they are dedicated so if you have a more professional grade uh, app that you need to have a dedicated cluster for you can uh, select this here but i'm just going to select the share clusters because this is just a demonstration restful api uh, database so we select create cluster and then we need to select the provider the cloud provider and the region and we can select between aws and google cloud and azure so i'm going to uh, just stick with aws and we can select the region and I'm going to go with Frankfurt, I think, here. But there is multiple regions available. And you can also select extra options for your cluster if you need to have encryption, more RAM, uh, backup, and so forth. So we click Create Cluster. And it's going to deploy our changes, create the cluster. And then we need to create a... Uh, we can see if we go to Database Access, over here in the left, we need to create a database user because when we connect it to uh, Node.js and Express, we, n we will have a connection string. And the connection string will connect using a user and a password. Uh, that is one way to do it. So I'm going to create a new database user here. And you can see there are, there are different authentication methods, uh, certificates, and also AWS. But we're going to stick with the password option here first. So I'm going to... Uh, write db user could be any database username in one word and then we should have a password and you can auto generate if uh, if you want that it's going to generate a secure password probably not that easy to remember maybe but there are different options to this okay and we just leave these options as they are and click add user okay so we have DB user and the last thing we need to do is we go to network access because we will connect to this database from localhost and if we were to deploy this RESTful API 
let's say to Heroku or something like this, we also would need to actually add the IP address maybe to the cluster, okay, so that it will be put on a whitelist so that uh, some IP addresses can actually connect to this. Because right now we don't, we have not added anyone that is allowed to connect to this cluster. So I'm going to, we can click add IP address and there are two options here and you can either go with your current IP address or you can go with allow access from anywhere. And of course, if you allow access from anywhere, it kind of says it all that everybody will be allowed to connect to this cluster. So be a little careful with uh, going with this option. This might be useful if you have trouble connecting to the database. If you suspect that it might be a network related issue, then you could test it out. And you can, you can allow access from anywhere using maybe a six hour limit. Uh, so it will be automatically uh, disabled after the six hours. But I'm going to go with this option here. I'm not going to click it right now, uh, but you can click on this add current IP address and then just uh, confirm it afterwards. Then you will have uh, allowed access from your current IP address. And also be aware that if you connect using a VPN, the IP address might change. If we go to clusters over here, uh, we can see that uh, MongoDB has created our cluster now. It's nice and set up here. And we can connect. There are There's a metrics, there are collections, and then we have uh, additional options here. And we can see also that this is a NoSQL database. We have collections. We don't have tables as we do in relational databases. So if we click on collections, we can see that we don't have any collections yet, but we are going to build all of that when we start making the API. Okay, so this is uh, pretty much all for setting up the database. And uh, in the next video, we will start actually making the, uh, the project where we will host all of our code in. So I hope you make this work and have fun with this. Bye-bye.